Well, good morning and welcome. I'm University of Illinois Extension's Todd Gleason, your host for today's Farm Doc Daily Webinar. Thank you so much for joining us here on this updated series for the fall of 2021. Our uh, panelists for the day include Gary Schnitke, agricultural economist here on the Urbana-Champaign campus of the University of Illinois, and Joanna Colusi. Uh, Joanna is a PhD student and has uh, been working with Gary closely. She also hails from Brazil. So we're going to talk a little bit about Brazil and the United States and how they compare in terms of agriculture. Welcome to both of you. Thank you so much. Joanna, I believe you are going to kick us off for the day. Yes, good morning. Uh, uh, thanks for the the nice introduction and uh, thanks to all you listeners for joining us this uh, morning. I am so happy to have the opportunity to talk about Brazil. Uh, you have uh, probably heard a little about Brazil, but you might not be that familiar with the country. Today we are uh, talk about Brazil overview, soybean production, corn production, grow uh, forecast, and finally about a survey in Brazil and the US. Um, so I'm gonna uh, start to talk a little about how big Brazil is. Like the US, it is a huge country. Brazil is the fifth largest country in the world in uh, terms of area. Uh, it's the most uh, populous uh, country in South uh, uh, America with more than 210 million uh, people. Brazil is also the largest economy in Latin America. And our first language is Portuguese, not Spanish. Uh, actually, Brazil is the only country in Latin America that does not speak Spanish and Portuguese. Um, and when it comes to agribusiness, Brazil is a powerhouse, the second largest agriculture exporter uh, in the world. Brazil is the number one exporter of coffee, orange juice, sugar, soybeans, beef, and chicken. Also, it's the other largest uh, producer of the soybeans, chicken, orange juice, and coffee. Soybean and uh, meat uh, make up the majority of Brazilian agribusiness. For example, soybeans represent 34% uh, of the total value exported by Brazilian agribusiness. Uh, meat, including beef, chicken, and uh, pork, comes in second uh, place among the most exported agriculture uh, uh, products. But Brazil is not just one of the world's largest uh, products and exports. It has the highest potential for agriculture area expansion among the largest producing countries. Brazil has around 70 million hectares of degraded uh, pastures and grasslands. That is one area the size of the Texas state. All that available uh, land makes for a great alternative for expanding uh, the country's agriculture without deforestation. That's very important. This is one of the biggest competitive advantages that Brazil has over its traditional competitors. It is important to highlight that Brazil uses only 30% uh, of its uh, territory for agriculture and livestock and keeps 66% of its native vegetation. On this map, you can see the land use and occupation. For example, Brazil uses only 90% of its uh, territory as uh, croplands. This 90% includes all sugarcane, grains, uh, planted uh, forest and uh, 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 fruit production, for example. Uh, take a look here at the percentage compared to preserved vegetation in rural uh, properties, unclaimed land, water, indigenous land and conservation areas. You can see a big difference between crop and uh, planet uh, uh, forest 
and uh, conservation areas, for uh, example. This image will give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Brazil has a total rural area of 868 million acres, about the equivalent of two Alaska states. And the country uses only 70.5% uh, of this area for crop production, such as corn and soybeans. So Brazil's agricultural activity still has potential to continue expanding due to the remaining available land. Although there has been a lot of uh, talk in the news about deforestation in Brazil, you know, but it is important to remember that it's completely illegal and represents a very small uh, percentage of production, less than 2%. Now, uh, let's uh, take a look at food production in Brazil. As you can see, over the last uh, 30 years, Brazil's crop production has grown 207 percent, from 68 million metric tons to 254 million metric tons. But if you consider the planting of up to uh, three harvests in the same area, and in the same year, the grain production expanded by 344% over the last 30 years. Meanwhile, the planted area has increased 58% and the average yields have grown 155% in the same uh, period. So now that you're done with this uh, quick overview, we're gonna uh, talk more specifically about soybeans and corn, is uh, starting with soybeans. I'm gonna uh, pass it to Gary Shinit to talk about that, about soybean production in Brazil. All right, thank you, Joanna. And we're going to obviously go over soybeans now and after that, corn. Uh, soybeans obviously has been the thing that has caught our attention over the last while, and uh, so let's go through through what has happened here. This slide is showing soybean acreage and production in Brazil, and we're showing that uh, that from 2012 up to 2021. So that gives you a feel for 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 the for the period there. And again, this is from 2012 through 2021. This would be roughly a, a, a 10 year period, not quite a 10 year period. But one of the things that you 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 can notice there is that we went from 2.9 um, million bushels up to 5.1 million bushels. Um, so during that period, three to five, we went up. Uh, we we more than doubled the the. Uh, almost doubled the, the production of soybeans in Brazil, not quite, and acreage went up from 68 to 98 million. So we've seen that growth considerably over that point in time. And again, if you're looking into the future, roughly those growths are, are projected to be to, con to continue into the future. Uh, for 2021 or this coming year, uh, Brazil is projected to produce a record of 5.1 million bushels, and that's an increase of 3.9% compared to last year. Last year, 2020-21, uh, was a record year in terms of production from Brazil. But you also must remember that last year, while it was a record year, it was also hampered by poor weather and dry weather, particularly later on. Uh, that number could have been larger had Brazil had normal weather. So the 2021 uh, number is 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 down from what it could have been with had there been normal weather. If we're looking at 2021, um, so much of the reason why we're expected to see an increase is because there's high price and profits. The same thing that's happening happening in the United States is also happening in Brazil. And the relative exchange rate between the Brazilian and US dollar also is impacting that. So again, if we look at the factors that are impacting the soybean market in Brazil, it's international prices, the same as here, the pork premiums, which are higher, 
and the exchange rates have been playing in favor of Brazilian pr production. And again, that exchange rate versus the U.S. Um, provides an extra impetus for production in soybeans. We would expect those uh, those factors to remain high or those prices to remain high in 2022 until we get too much production, I suppose. And again, we expect those acreages to increase in Brazil. We would probably be saying the, the same in the United States at that point in time. So we're going to see an acreage response. And then if we get good weather again or, or, or better weather than we had this past year, we might uh, expect those, uh, those uh, production levels to increase even from those that we are projecting. Brazil is expected to increase both in terms of its exports, so Chinese demand, like here, remains remains strong in Brazil. But it's also some of this is also going to the crush, which is the biodiesel part of it, and also the meat industry. Uh, Brazil is is exporting more meat again, primarily to China, and that uh, that growth in the livestock uh, livestock sector is impacting impacting what we expect to see in 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 china or excuse me in brazil is in terms of uh, soybean production when we make comparisons of soybean production and acres to the from the u.s to the brazil to brazil uh, we see here that u.s was leading brazil throughout uh, much of this period sort of reached each other in 2012 U.S. exceeded Brazil in 2013, 14, 15, and then um, Brazil took the took over the leading spot in the U.S. in terms of uh, of world production in soybeans. So, and and as we're looking forward, um, you can likely expect. Uh, expect that to continue as we're moving forward. Um, Brazil, again, we're, as we've shown before, and we'll come to the forecast in the future, um, we're expecting that growth to con continue in Brazil, and therefore that difference, if anything, is likely to widen in the future. Again, Brazil has surpassed the U.S. as the world's largest soybean producer, and we would expect that to remain the same, and that is largely because has happened because of a ninefold increase in soybean production in, in Brazil over the last uh, 30 years. Again, we expect those uh, to continue in the future. So as we decompose that soybean production between the U.S. and Brazil, you can look at acres planted, um, Brazil's acres planted compared to the U.S., for 2020, um, 95 million acres for Brazil, that compares to the U.S. It's important to note that the U.S. has grown in soybean production as well, as we've looked at soybean production in the U.S. Um, what you can t have typically seen over this period in the past is wheat acres have gone down, soybean and corn acres have gone up, and soybean acres have in essence, if we're looking at growth in the United States, it has to come from another crop, and historically that has come from uh, from 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 uh, wheat. And now we're wondering whether whether that will continue into corn as well. Yields in both countries are near relative, uh, re are relatively close to one another, and in fact, Brazil leads the United States in in in, in yield per acre in certain years last year they have and again that will depend on weather and you can see that brazil yields compared to the 1990s through 98 period when brazil was usually below so uh yields in the united states brazil has caught up in terms of those yields and again that has also occurred while while brazil has been increasing acreage so it's it, increasing acreage and yields have gone up as well. Over the time period for which we've seen soybean uh, soybean production, uh, we've seen the areas uh, shift in production. 1950s, it was close to uh, close to uh, close to the, the Atlantic Ocean and was primarily in the southern part of the country. And Magellana's shaking her head. Yes, there she has mm -hmm. taught me well. She, uh, <laughs> 
where where that has happened in the 1960s we began to see that grow north did you want to say anything here joanna or matopiba yeah and and we're seeing seeing it move move north so in the 70s we we began to see that go into Mato Grosso, and in particular in the 80s. And in the next decade, um, we're expecting that growth to continue in Mato Grosso as well as that area in the Mato Piba. And here's that Mato Piba area. The Mato Piba area is known as the last agricultural frontier in, 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 in Brazil and is composed of several states. And this is where we, we, we are expecting that growth to continue. And again, uh, the state that's just uh, west of that is Mato Grosso. So we're expecting that to move east and uh, into this area. This area um, is growing because of, likely, uh, because of low cost of land. And it's important to remember that if you're looking at Brazilian production and comparing it to the United States, Brazil will have much lower cost of land, primarily because their land supply is, it, there's chance for growth, whereas in the United States, we are fixed in terms of uh, the area that we have in terms of production. Here just gives you a feel again for where that the, 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 the acres by state have grown. You will note at the bottom, Mato Grosso, 26.5% is what it was in, 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 in 2021. That is the state that you often hear about. Um, that is the state uh, where we often think about the growth happening. Those are large farms in that area. And essentially those farms in Mato Grosso have moved from the southern part of the country up to Mato Grosso, started new operations. Um, the Brazilians have made a big effort to uh, adapt soybeans and do the research and, and, and figure out how to, how to move production into this sub subtropical area with that emphasis in this, the, 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 the programs we've seen, um, seen those acres grow in that area. And again, we're expecting those to grow into that Mata Piba area, which is now 2.7%, 2.4%. So that's where a, a more growth is continuing to add. How many acres can Brazil add to corn and soybean production? And we are going to give you a forecast of that yeah. here yeah. very, very yeah. soon. Yeah. And, and here, here's the quick answer to that is don't, don't, don't expect it not to grow. Um, so that, that will give you a sort of a history of soybean production. Again, in Brazil, uh, Brazil has taken the number one spot in terms of soybean production in the United States and, and or over the United States, and there's no reason really not to expect growth here. We have a two-part question here. Is yield variability in, in Brazil significant higher? And is its variability because greater overtime due to climate change than the U.S. for their soybean and corn, corn crops? Overall, and I'm going to take a shot, and John is going to correct me. I would say that uh, yield variability in Brazil is actually lower than the United States, um, and, and it has been lower. What uh, what uh, what uh, climate change will do to Brazil versus the United States? I uh, I do not know. Joanne? That's a good question, but uh, I can affirm for sure that uh, most of the part of the increase of the yields in soybean, Brazil and corn uh, too is a result from investment of the technology. Uh, so soil uh, management, um, new machines, uh, research, it's a result of this new generation in, in Brazil. You, you see in Brazil many young uh, people uh, uh, leading the farmers. But when you think about climate change, uh, you see some uh, af uh, impacts when you think about uh, Rio Grande do Sul, for example, in the south of Brazil. Uh, you cannot able to do a second crop corn, for example, uh, in, in Rio Grande do Sul, because during the 
uh, winter is cold. But in Paraná, for example, it's a salt uh, state. It is possible to do that today, maybe because uh, of the climate change in the last years. So, uh, of course, there is an impact, but I would say that the the high impact is from uh, investment in technology. And you, by the way, come from Rio Grande do Sul? Yes, in the south of Brazil, is near Argentina and Uruguay. Uh, who was born in Rio Grande do Sul called Gaucho. It's like <laughs> Argentina and Uruguay, yes. For example, in this state, during the winter, it's very similar than here because you needed to choose between soybean and corn during the summer and during the winter uh, we have uh, wheat. But in Paraná, Mato Grosso, Goiás, Mato Grosso do Sul, the farmers don't need to choose between uh, corn and soy uh, bean because uh, they can do the both in the same season in the same area. So why don't you, Joanna, take us through corn now. We had a question about infrastructure, and we will get to infrastructure. Oh, you have this information. Yeah. All right, take, take us through. The... Yeah, I am biased to talk about Brazil, of course, but if you look at the numbers the last years, it's a really impressive increase in soybean and corn, too. So I'm going to talk about corn production in Brazil. I'm going to start with the current situation. Last week, Brazilian farmers began uh, planting for what is expected to be a record-breaking harvest. The corn crop uh, in Brazil is expected to increase by uh, 3%. Reaching 50 million acres, according to data from the national supply company, the CONAP. High uh, prices and lower corn supplies in Brazil this year, because of the weather problems, uh, are the main factors behind this projection. The draw uh, during this year reduced safrinha production, uh, the corn as a second crop, by uh, 20%. You can see the production uh, drop in 2021 in the chart. Uh, as a result, corn production is expected to increase uh, 3% uh, next harvest, producing a record of 4.5 billion bushels. It's important to highlight that there is a 7% chance of the La Nina phenomenon this year, although it is expected to be low intensity. Uh, this year, the draw uh, in Brazil was very hard, especially for corn production. For soybean production, not, because the season ends in March, April, and the draw starts before that, uh, just at the moment in the corn, uh, corn uh, planting. And so all the season, the corn season this year, face uh, hard uh, problems. So the motivation to plant corn in Brazil mainly comes from this year's attractive prices. The cash price for a bag of corn has risen more than 100% in 12 months. The uptick in the price of corn in Brazil is directly related to internal and external factors. The domestic grain demand in Brazil, for example, is expected to remain high in 2020, too, because of the need for animal feed and ethanol. Uh, besides that, Brazil is expected to remain one of the largest supplies of chicken and pork to Asia and the Mideast. So definitely the country will need corn to supply the industry. Uh, when you think about ethanol, uh, recently there are a lot of investments in Brazil regarding ethanol, especially in Mato Grosso. Uh, and when you think about the meat industry in, in Brazil, that is very important too, especially when you think about beef, uh, poultry, and um, 
pork to Brazil export a lot for this country. So you can look for more information about uh, planting grain crop in Brazil in article uh, published yesterday on farm.daily. Uh, there, there are more information about this expectation regarding this new season that just start in Brazil. Now let's go back in time. Brazil's corn production has increased over the past two decades because of the increased production of second crop corn, also called safrinha or little harvest in Portuguese. Over the past 20 years, the second crop corn production has risen uh, 13 fold, according to data from Conap. You can see this increase in the chart here on the yellow line. You can see this year, of course, you have a decrease of the production. But if you look 2000 until 2020, for example, you can see this uh, high increase. Uh, as you know, a wet dry season in the Midwest and in Brazil is uh, date, uh, makes it possible to uh, plant soybeans in the spring and the corn in the summer, in both in the same, uh, same area. Uh, for example, here in the Midwest of the US, uh, farmers need to choose between soybeans and corn. It's depend on the market. In Brazil, when you think about Mato Grosso, Paraná, Goiás, the Midwest region, farmers can do the, the both uh, cultures in the same year. Among the top five is, is states for second crop corn in Brazil, Mato Grosso leads uh, with 44% of production, followed by Paraná, Mato Grosso do Sul, Goiás, and Minas Gerais. Uh, currently, the safrinha crop accounts for almost 72% of total corn uh, planted area, followed by the first crop, 26%, and third crop, less than 2%. Third crop, you are correct. <laughs> Over the past few years, a third crop corn season has emerged in the north and northeast Brazil. You can see that here on the red line, uh, despite representing less than 2% of the total corn production, the third crop corn has the potential to continue growing in the coming years. So the corn production in Brazil uh, has been uh, pushed by several factors, such as available land, favorable climate with a long growing season that enables multiple harvests per year, like a corn, soybean, wheat, uh, livestock, uh, technological advancement, uh, advancements in soy management, and rising global demand and higher international prices. These factors are essential to increase of the safrinha corn or corn production in general in Brazil in the last two decades. Now, uh, take a look in this chart. Uh, that's a comparison between corn production in Brazil and the US. The corn production in Brazil has increased 143% in 20 years. Meanwhile, in the US, corn production grew 67% over the same period of the time. Even still, American production is over four uh, times more than the Brazilian. There is a big difference between the corn production in Brazil and the US. It's different than soybean, for example. Now, uh, let's uh, take a quick look at the world corn trade. Brazil has emerged as the US largest competitor in the global corn market. To give you an idea, Brazil's share of the world corn trade increased from 7.5% in 2011 to 2022% in 2021. Uh, in the USDA's agriculture project to 2030, Brazil is expected to be the world's second largest corn exporter over the next 
uh, 10 years behind the US, of course, but ahead to Argentina and Ukraine. So it's a lot of information, I know, but you have just one hour, so I needed to enjoy the time uh, providing uh, information. And all these information raises an important question. Could US corn exporters be affected in the long uh, term by the emergence of Brazil as a major corn producer? What do you think? Uh, please uh, let us know what do you think in this poll. And the poll is up there already. So yeah, yeah if you want to take the poll, um, you're you're voting right now. And obviously, as we're looking forward, we're expecting a uh, expecting Brazil to be a, to be a major competitor in the U.S. corn market. Um, we'll continue to vote here. And we've got one short question. Does Brazil use GMOs? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Maybe uh, 100. No, you have 95% of the production is uh, transgenic in Brazil and 5% uh, it's no GMO organic. Just to look in the specific markets like uh, Europe. Yeah. But of course, GMO. Yeah, Brazil. and I, I don't think those statistics would be too much different than than what are in the United States. We have uh, ninety four percent of you saying yes, one, three percent no, and two percent saying I don't know. So there you go. Um, again, Brazil looks to be coming on as a as a producer of soybeans, and actually also as an exporter of meat. So that that will likely pers uh, continue to push their corn production on as they need that uh, uh, energy source in their their, their rations. Uh, the other thing, safrina corn refers to second crop corn. Just second crop corn. You have the first crop corn that start in Brazil now at this moment. The second crop corn in Brazil will start in February, and the third crop in Brazil will start um, in the Northeast in October. But yes, safinha refers just to second crop. And we're planting soybeans right now, or starting soybean production, or planting right now? Yes, officially last week, starting Mato Grosso, Paraná, Goiás, Mato Grosso do Sul. And the harvest this uh, season will be in February. All right, so let's uh, go on here. Now we're going to focus more on growth in the future. Oh, yeah, you will answer the questions so regarding I, logistics. And yeah, <laughs> logistics, etc. Yeah. Here's what we're expecting Brazilian grain acreage uh, projections to do. And this is just acreage, so 40% increase in the next decade. So uh we're going to see uh we're expected to see that the acreage in grain production increase by 40 percent this is the reason why if you're looking at high corn and soybean prices now you might want to temper your expectations in the future because there's 40 percent new acres coming on in brazil and there likely will be other acres as as well and again um those, those acreage increases are coming in those new areas. At the same time that we see a 40% acreage increase, we expect grain production to increase 71%. The 71% is higher than that uh, acreage increase because of several factors. One of those is uh, uh, yield increases, so building in those usual yield increases, and that would be impacting the United States as well as Brazil. We'd be building in yield increases, but also the sec the other the other part of that that uh, is contributing to that 71 percent increase is the double crop and triple triple crop uh, 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 phenomena. Corn being safrina corn and third crop corn obviously doubling up on those acres and that would then increase uh, acreage uh, or uh, total total crop production. Um, continue to expect uh, soybean exports and corn exports and also meat exports to, to grow from Brazil. Again, you're looking at those areas in growth and therefore you would expect 
the Brazilian exports to increase in, in, in exports. Again, if you're making a comparison between the U.S. and Brazil, U.S. has relatively stable grain acreage. We've probably done about as much double cropping. Maybe, maybe we can do double cropping around here to a certain extent with wheat and, uh, and soybeans, but uh, the double crop and triple crop phenomena is likely to be much larger in Brazil than here, and that will contribute to that acreage increase and therefore exports as well. We would further expect over time uh, Brazil to, to maintain its lead in soybean production and probably make that wider over the United States. Again, Brazil is going to be adding acres uh, to its soybean production that will, or those are the projections. Short of, I don't know what would cause that to end. Social unrest, I suppose, is about the only thing that you could uh, see that would cause uh, cause uh, those acreage not to grow or very low prices, I suppose. So um, as long as we have profitable soy, corn and soybean production, you will expect to see those, uh, those acres to grow in, in Brazil. The other point of that is, is that in terms of operating cost, or you know, if you look at non-land cost, the, the 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 cost in Brazil and U.S. are relatively equal to one another. Where Brazil has a big big advantage is in land cost, and because they have that supply of land, they will have lower land cost. And also, as the infrastructure improves, uh, that 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 will get factored in here as well. Um, where are we? Uh, expect those acres of soybean uh, soybeans to increase are on underutilized pasture land so the so the conversion of pasture to grain production is is largely uh, or, or continues to be a large source of new grain production and soybean acres uh, soybean acres are going to be planted in those new production acres so uh, our new production frontiers, Matapiba. So you uh, expect to see that grow there. And we would expect, just as we are seeing in the United States, soybeans to replace other crops. And there also will be uh, increased use of irrigation, open areas for soybean, which will open areas for soybean production. Grain production in our, we have this question, grain production includes soybeans, corn, and all grain, grain crops. Wheat would be in there as well. The major growth uh, is, going, is projected to be in soybeans and corn. Yeah, when you talk about grain production, uh, the total grain production is soybean, corn, rice, cotton, and wheat. And again, as we're looking forward, uh, we would expect that major growth to be in corn and soybeans, just as it has been in the past, and that is being fueled to as a livestock feed. And if you're looking at soybeans, um, that has taken over or is the is the protein source, and corn is likely to be the preferred energy source moving forward. Again, if we're looking at where those production growth is by by production by state, we expect those to sort of, uh, for corn being that Mato Grosso, the Mato Piba area, actually we're, we're expecting corn to increase pretty much everywhere. Again, um, that would be uh, that would that that would be the second crop, safrina, and third crop corn. And then if you're looking at soybeans, again, that's that that's a newer production or new acres being brought on production in the Mata Piba area. So the so the uh, the new, I suppose, uh, production practice that's coming on in Brazil is not just one crop of soybeans, but soybeans, corn, and I'm not sure what does this third crop what what's the rotation there when we're looking at third crop uh, it's depend the region uh, in the south of brazil rio grande do sul the rotation happens with the wheat for example in the midwest the rot because you have two two crops in the same season but the rotation can can happens with uh, 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 pasture lands i mean livestock 
or cotton sometimes or beans it's depend the region and the climate because brazil again it's a huge country uh each region has a, a specific uh profile so we have a question where could second crop corn occur and it's sort of in that middle area if we're looking at the map right now it's sort of in this Mato Grosso, uh, Mata Piba, sort of this middle area of this of the country, sort of in the central area. So that's a that that is a huge area where where second crop corn can occur. Am I not correct there, Joanna? Yes, yes. Uh, when you think about just to show everyone uh, information today, uh, thirty five percent of the. Uh, soybean area is occupied by second crop so you have at least 60 percent of the possibility to increase the safrinha corn in these soybean areas but of course it depends on the climate in each region and say that again 60 percent uh 35 percent of the soybean area it's occupied by corn second crop okay today all right, so there, 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 there. You got to feel, feel for it. And, and yes, if you're wondering, is that a major uh, th uh, con uh, competitor to the United States? Yes, it can be, and likely will be. We've also had sort of this question: What's the profitability of first, second, and third crop corn? Obviously, if it's the second and third crop, soybeans are more profitable than corn, right? And part of that's probably due to the uh, the, the movement of corn and uh, of soybeans for export. But it, it's also important to realize when you're looking at a second crop corn, you've already paid for the land cost with the first crop. So it's pretty much the variable cost, um, equipment cost. So so you've already sort of paid the, uh, the, the land cost once. We're gonna take this question is what what is the potential what's your you've heard us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you've heard us. We shouldn't have answered yeah. that question before we've asked you. Yeah. Um you receive a lot of questions, so <laughs> yeah. All right. So we have this question. What other crafts might be replaced by soybeans? A coffee, sugar, fruit, rice, beans. Right now, wouldn't you say that the major thing that soybeans are 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 replacing our pasture land. The other area, the other crops that were mentioned there are remaining roughly the same acres. Yeah, uh, it's again, it's depending on the region, but for sure, uh, coffee not, uh, orange juice not, because it's different when you think about in, uh, grain areas in Mato Grosso, for example, it is possible to cultivate soybeans, corn, cotton, and beans is very uh, similar than uh, Paraná because the coffee, for example, the number one state is Minas Gerais. It's a different uh, profile. São Paulo also. São Paulo is the first one in our juice. So we've had this poll. We're going to close it now. And here's what you voted for that poll. And I don't see it coming up, Jim. There it is. Up to 20%, 17%, up to 40%, 37%, up to 60%, 34%. More than 60% is 11%. And one of the things about the second crop corn is, is that uh, prices will matter. So. Prices will matter. So let's, uh, get... Joanne, I have a question to follow up on that. This is Todd. So just, yeah. just to clarify, first crop corn is full season corn, and it is the highest yielding corn in Brazil. Second crop corn is much more like second crop soybeans in the United States or wheat beans, we would call them in the United States. So it doesn't yield nearly as much, but it has the largest acreage. Is that correct? Yes. Do you refer regarding yields? Yeah, yes. Yeah, the second crop is the highest yield so when you compare some the first crop and the third crop in Brazil. But I, I need to take a look at the numbers regarding uh, bushel per acres and kilos per hectare to do a comparison more uh, precise. Well, I, was, I was thinking it was the opposite, but okay. First crop, uh, second crop is the higher of the two yields? Yes, yes. Hmm. So we will we'll make sure that we put that on farm docs yeah, some, that's like, yeah. <laughs> sometime. Uh, so as we're looking at Brazil, here's where we've seen the barriers to growth. 
dependence on road transportation by trucks and poor roads. Uh, and if you're looking at the price that farmers receive, that is the transportation cost, particularly in country, is a very large deal. And that uh, that getting that uh, fixed, so to speak, from a Brazilian standpoint, would uh, would would aid in their production environment. Uh, On-farm storage de de deficit and low investments in irrigation. Um, Turning first to cargo transportation in Brazil, in 2019, 65% of it is on roads, 15% railway, 13% by waterways, and 6.4% on other. We're expecting that to, uh, to change and move more towards rail, 15% to 35%, 13% on waterways, and 20, moving to 29% waterways. So um, roads will still be an important part, but for, rather than moving from a majority, uh, moving to railways, and there's big emph uh, emphasis on building rails as of right now. It's, uh, yes, there are a lot of investments in Brazil in the last five years regarding railways and waterways too. So those, uh, as as we're moving moving forward, we would expect the largely or those, that that infrastructure to improve, which would then obviously increase the competitive competitiveness of Brazil to the United States. Uh, we would still we would be expecting again. This is a projection uh, for for grain crop and and storage capacity. Storage capacity is projected to grow. But uh, the grain crop is expected to grow as well, and overall, there likely will remain to be important storage uh, capacity problems within within uh, Brazil. Again, if you're looking at uh, an expansion of 70% of grains, you're 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 li you're likely also continue to uh, continue to see that uh, that that to be a problem. Um, we have a question here. Can you give us some idea of Chinese China's role in these infrastructure improvements in Brazil? Who's funding these investments? Um, yes, there, there are funding from Brazilian government, of course, but there are funding regarding China to uh, private companies. Yeah, but the both. I don't know if the China is the majority investor. I think the Brazilian government at this moment is the majority in, in investor in infrastructure in Brazil. But of course, there is participation from China. So is the railway and waterway increases anticipated by 2025 part of China's Belt and Road Initiative? No, no, no. There is no relationship with that. All right. We've also had this uh, question about irrigation and total planted acres. Is irrigation, what? so is water the issue with irrigation or simply the investment in, in irrigation? Yeah, in Brazil, there are a big potential to invest in irrigation. There are a lot of rivers, uh, but of course, you need to have capital money to invest in this kind of the technology. And you can see just eight, Point seven. This number is in from 2017, but maybe today's for sure is less than 10% uh, of the agriculture areas in Brazil um, are irrigation. So there we go. The last thing we want to talk about is our communications effects, the adoption of technology. Joanna's actually here getting your PhD, mm -hmm. so you might want to tell us a little bit about this, and we're glad to have Joanna here. She's working here, and just tell us what you're up to here. Yeah, so before you open for questions again, because there are a lot of questions, that's very nice. Uh, I'd like to talk very quickly about our research project being done in Brazil and the U.S. Gary Shinitki and I are working to understand how com communication affects the adoption of new technologies in agriculture. We have already collected data in Brazil with almost 500 respondents in the top five soybean producing states. Now we are inviting soybean farmers in Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, Minnesota, and Nebraska to complete a short survey. 
the questions focus on how farmers decide what kind of technologies to adopt. It takes only five minutes and responses are completely confidential. The survey is quick and really easy to complete. You can scan the key UR code on the screen or access this link. Uh, we know that farmers are very busy, especially at harvest time, but you would really appreciate the participation. As compensation, we receive the results with the comparison between both countries if you provide an email address on the survey. The results will enable us and other professionals to be more effective in communicating with you and other farmers. So thank you very much for your collaboration with the farm doc team. And, and then, <laughs> we have a little poll for you exactly. here. Exactly. If you please please take a little moment to answer this poll. And again, this is Joanna's PhD resource, so uh, research. <laughs> so she's trying to get her PhD and we'll yeah. get our PhD. I need the, the respondents for that. <laughs> <laughs> and she needs respondents yeah. to get her get her PhD uh, get her PhD research done. And again, it, it will be an interesting comparison of communication from uh, from Brazil and the US. What, what just tell us your university in Brazil that you're my you my university in brazil is federal university of rio grande do sul it's a public universe like a university of illinois all right thank you joanna and as you're uh we're gonna close your close uh, close the poll here and we've uh, got 13 percent of you say that you will yes and and we will email you a link so there you go we appreciate all the yeses that we have have there we still do have some questions here. Yeah. We do, indeed. We'll get to those in just a second. We want to take some time, though, Gary, to appreciate a few other folks that make uh, what you do possible on this Farm Doc webinar as well. They include our sponsors uh, like Compeer Financial and Corteva AgriSciences, the TIA Center for Farmland Research that's here uh, in the College of Aces, the Agricultural College on campus, farmland.illinois.edu, Farm Credit Illinois, the Corn Growers in the State of Illinois, the Illinois Corn Growers Association, uh, the S Illinois Soybean Association, FS Growmark, the Gardner Agricultural Policy Program here on campus, and of course, uh, ACE, which is the College uh, of Agricultural Consumer and Environmental Sciences and the Department of Agricultural and Consumer Economics. Our thank thanks go to all of them. There are some upcoming webinars as uh, Gary and Joanna are sorting through the into the questions here and just keep putting those in if you have them. Next week, and you're already signed up for these, we'll talk about managing weeds in the future. Uh, and what variable weather, uh, the kind of weather we're having and expected to have over the next few decades might do to the weed populations. Uh, and there are some insights that can be drawn from the data we already have. So there's uh, a couple of decades worth of data about weeds in fields in the United States, how those populations change and how they interact, of course, with the crop. Uh, that should be very interesting. Marty Williams and Aaron Hager will be here next Thursday at 11 o'clock. And then, uh, so the MRTN, nitrogen rates uh, across uh, the Midwest and in Illinois, particularly, I suppose, and that'll be on the following Thursday. You're already signed up, so you'll get an email about that. Any more questions? that you need to go through, Gary? Yeah, we got a couple here. Are Brazilian soybean producers positioning themselves uh, to increase their soybean oil, oil output in order to, to help the U.S. meet the increasing uh, demand for the low carbon fuel standard in California and potentially other states? And you could, uh, you so just, just to remember that uh, uh, so our oil from soybeans is a relatively fixed amount, but yes, uh, if the if it can be moved more cheaply from Brazil than from the United States, they will be a competitor. Um, yes, in <laughs> Brazil today, the uh, around sixty percent of the soybean is are exported, and forty percent is to stay in Brazil to become oil. Uh, but sometimes uh, the cost Brazil is very high. And many uh, farmers prefer to export, uh, or industries sometimes prefer to export 
to do an industrialization inside of the country because the high costs? Um, so we have a question. Please have Joanna pronounce her full name. So do that. Is is in Portuguese is Joanna Colucci. In English, Joanna Colucci. <laughs> All right, so are infrastructure improvements keeping up with the increase in grain production in Brazil? So what do you think, or what are you say, seeing there, Joanna? Yes, especially in new agriculture frontiers, because when you think about the consolidated areas like uh, Rio Grande do Sul, Paraná, uh, you have not perfect infrastructure, but you have a good infrastructure. But when you think about Mato Grosso, the number one and corn and soybean, for example, when you think about Mato Piba, Maranhão, Tocantins, Piauí and Bahia, you have a big challenge regarding infrastructure. You can imagine sometimes 3,000 kilometers, it is almost how uh, thousand uh, uh, miles, Yeah, <laughs> almost Five. Almost to the uh, to yeah. the Gulf port from here. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, you can imagine all soybean and corn are transportation by trucks, and sometimes in roads that is uh, it's not uh, road in good condition. So these improvements in infra extraction for sure will stimulate the investments in more acre age in corn and soybeans. Yep. So here we have a comment which I would would largely echo we are facing two significant threats in american agriculture one is a significant threat of our critical ag related intellectual property by china and we can see that obviously through purchases of uh, agricultural com companies as well as other means the other is the rise of brazilian corn production which we're discussing here today and yeah i i would actually even perhaps broaden that we still have a large area in Brazil that will be developed into agricultural production or grain production. And so switching, and again, as we've mentioned, switching some of the pasture land to grain production as well as growth in those new areas. Uh, are we expecting Safrina crop to grow? And the answer is yes, right? Yes, yes. It's especially because you have a lot of the available land, you have technology, you have investment in this area, and I think the most important, the climate. Yeah. Because when you think the questions uh, is regarding safrinha here in the US, it's very difficult because climate. Yeah. For example, in Rio Grande do Sul, near Argentina and in Uruguay, in the south of Brazil, it is not possible to do a safrinha corn because you don't have climate for that. It's cold during the winter. And can we do second crops around here of corn? And it would be difficult for me to think of an area where that that is a uh, that is a viable alternative. Mm -hmm. So, how does how does grow, Brazil's growing production to export compared to world demand, growth, and consumption? And the answer is, I, um, um, you know, honestly, the, the they're they are mirroring each other. Uh, 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 they are mirroring each other as we, as we, because you Brazil and the U.S. are so important part of that. Um, if you're looking at what's happening to demand, you're also looking at what's happening to supply. All right, so we have this question. I thought that third crop corn was basically first crop, but in North Steep, Yes. On small farms with no few technology for self-use. That's true. That's true. A third crop in Brazil, it's a very little crop. Uh, you can see this in the chart. And this happened in the northeastern states. Uh, when you think about the first and the second, the third crop is not in the same states. The first crop in the south of Brazil. The second crop uh, is in the midwestern Brazil. And the third crop is the northeast Brazil. So we're That's going. Correct. Yeah, we're going to launch a poll again, the one that we did beforehand. Uh, so we're uh, Jim, have you launched that? And we've launched a poll. If you don't, don't. Uh, if you could do that again, we just want we, we want to see if you've changed your mind. I guess we got more people on now too. We did this poll 
before we did that. So we're interested. So folks can go ahead and fill that poll out. I will say that uh, folks that want to follow Brazilian agriculture can always find articles on the Farm Doc Daily website uh, and that I do follow agriculture in Brazil, other parts of the world on a daily basis on the closing market report from willag.org. You can just look it up, W-I-L-L-A-G dot O-R-G. We've been talking about third crop corn and the planting of first crop corn, which takes place. I also try to stay up to speed and bring you the numbers from the USDA counterpart in Brazil, which is CONAB. Uh, their first crop, uh, US, their first crop, numbers will come out well their next set of numbers will come out the morning of october 7th sometimes they coincide with usda reports of the day out but uh, i'll make sure that those are up and you can follow along at willag.org so uh, here is that poll repeated gary so that we have uh, we have roughly the same results so you haven't changed your mind yeah. So, uh, and we would like to thank everybody for being with us uh, on this day. Joanna, thank you so much. And good luck uh, with getting the numbers filled out on your survey as you head towards your PhD, too. I think that's really important. And it will be interesting to see about the communications devices that producers use uh, across both Brazil and the United States. And how they differ. Again, this has been a Farm Doc Daily webinar. Joanna Colusi, along with Gary Schnitke, have been the presenters. Jim Baltz is behind the scene. Thank you, Jim, for making sure everything works so smoothly. I've been your host for the day. Uh, my name is Todd Gleason. You have a great day here and across the planet. <laughs>